Arena Football, Wikipedia Article Audio Arena football is a variety of indoor gridiron football played by the Arena Football League and China Arena Football League. The game is played indoors on a smaller field than American or Canadian outdoor football, resulting in a faster and higher scoring game. The sport was invented in 1981, and patented in 1987, by James F. Foster, Jr., a former executive of the National Football League and the United States Football League. It was a proprietary game until 2007, when the patent expired. Though not the only variant of indoor American football, it is the most widely known, and the one on which most other forms of modern indoor football are at least partially based. Three leagues have played under arena football rules, the AFL, which played 22 seasons from 1987 to 2008 and resumed play under new ownership in 2010, Arena Football 2, the AFL's erstwhile developmental league, which played 10 seasons from 2000 through 2009, and the CAFL, which began play in 2016 but is not directly affiliated with the AFL. History Birth of the Arena Football League While attending the major indoor soccer league All-Star Game on February 11, 1981, at Madison Square Garden, Jim Foster came up with his version of football and wrote the rules and concepts down on the outside of a manila folder, which resides at the Arena Football Hall of Fame. Over the next five years, he created a more comprehensive and definitive set of playing rules, playing field specifications and equipment, along with a business plan to launch a proposed small, initial league to test market the concept of arena football nationally. As a key part of that plan, while residing in the Chicago area, he tested the game concept through several closed-door practice sessions in late 1985 and early 1986 in nearby Rockford. After fine-tuning the rules, he then secured additional operating capital to play several test games in the Metro Center in April 1986, and the Rosemont Horizon Arena in February 1987. The next critical step for Jim Foster was securing a network television contract with ESPN and an initial group of key national corporate sponsors including United Airlines, Holiday Inn, Wilson Sporting Goods, Budget Rental Car, and Hardy's Restaurants. As the league's founding commissioner he established a league office with a small staff in suburban Chicago, and with addition of some much-needed additional investor capital, was ready to launch the Arena Football League. On June 19, 1987, the Pittsburgh Gladiators hosted the Washington Commandos in the first league game after a two-week training camp for all four charter teams in Wheaton, Illinois. AFL football operations and training was overseen by veteran college and pro head coach, Mouse Davis, the father of the famed run-and-shoot offense. The other two 1987 teams were the Chicago Bruisers and the Denver Dynamite. As the AFL grew into an established league with close to 20 teams, it defined itself as a major market pro sports product and welcomed Commissioner C. David Baker. In the early 2000s the league appeared to have financially strong team ownership including NFL owners, as well as major names in the entertainment world, and, for a while, a weekly Sunday afternoon broadcast on NBC starting the week after the Super Bowl, during the stadium played games off-season. The growth and establishment of the AFL as a major market league spawned a developmental league that Foster also helped CO found, a minor league called Arena Football 2, in 2000. 
The league was set up to operate in medium-size markets around the U.S. where it initially enjoyed growth under the guidance of AF2 President Jerry Coors. Other people have started their own indoor football minor leagues. These leagues do not technically play arena football or use the proper name arena football which is a registered trademark, and initially because of the patent on the rules that Foster obtained in 1990. The other two partners were Chicago-based lawyers Bill Nero and Jerry Coors who in early 1987 joined Foster to help secure the patents on the Arena Football Game System and re-establish the Arena Football League in early 1990 as a franchised league after successfully removing a small group of limited partners for multiple breaches of the limited partnership agreement that was the basis for operating the AFL during the 1988 season. The patents expired in 2007. The trademarks only cover the words Arena Football and Succession, since 2017, other indoor leagues have described themselves as Arena Leagues in their name without official endorsement from Gridiron Enterprises. Arena Football is played exclusively indoors, in arenas usually designed for either basketball or ice hockey teams. The field is the same width and length as a standard NHL hockey rink, making it approximately a third of the dimensions of a regular American gridiron football field. The scrimmage area is 50 yards long, and each end zone is approximately 8 yards deep. Depending on the venue in which a game is being played, the end zones may be rectangular or, where necessary because of the building design, rounded. Each sideline has a heavily padded barrier, with the padding placed over the hockey dasher boards. The goalpost uprights are 9 feet wide, and the crossbar is 15 feet above the playing surface. Taut rebound nets on either side of the posts bounce any missed field goals back into the field of play. The ball is live when rebounding off these nets or their support apparatus. The entire goal frame and goal side rebound net system is suspended on cables from the rafters. The bottom of the two goal side rebound nets are 8 feet off the playing surface. Each net frame is 32 feet high by 30 feet wide. Rules of the game A player is not counted as out of bounds on the sidelines unless he is pushed into or falls over the sideline barrier. This rule was put in place before the 2006 season. Before that time, a sideline with only a small amount of space existed between the sideline stripe and the barrier which would provide the space for a ball carrier to step out of bounds before hitting the sideline barrier. Each team fields eight players at a time from a 21-man active roster. Before 2007, Players played both offense and defense except for the quarterback, kicker, an offensive specialist and two defensive specialists. The field If a player enters and leaves, from the moment he leaves the player is considered dead and cannot return to play until the designated time is served. Exception: A dead player may participate on kickoffs, or as long snapper or holder. In 2006, the AFL changed its substitution rules such that free substitutions were allowed on all kickoffs. The most significant change was the introduction of free substitution, the so called Elway rule. Previously, AFL coaches were limited to one substitution per position per quarter. Since the 2007 season, coaches can substitute players at will. The players The rationale was that free substitution would improve the overall quality of football in the league by giving coaches the freedom to put their best players on the field for every play of the game, and that teams would be able to select from a wider player talent pool when building their rosters. Traditionalists, however, 
believed the rule changes were the beginning of the removal of the Ironman style of play of arena football that the league had actively promoted for 20 seasons, and that removing the Ironman style of play took away a key component of what made arena football a distinctive sport over other versions of football. Substitution Rules Four offensive players must be on the line of scrimmage at the snap, one of the linemen must declare himself the tight end. One offensive player may be moving forward at the time of the snap as long as he has not yet crossed the line of scrimmage. Three defensive players must be in a three or four point stance at the start of the snap. Two defenders serve as linebackers, called the Mac and the Jack. The Mac may blitz from the side of the line opposite the offensive tight end. The Jack's role has changed after new rules set in place by the league in 2008. The Jack cannot blitz, but under new, more defense-friendly rules, the Jack linebacker may roam sideline to sideline within five yards of the line of scrimmage and drop into coverage once the quarterback pump fakes. Yards back from the line of scrimmage. Rules before 2007 season. The ball is kicked off from the goal line, to start the halves and odd overtimes, or after any score except for a safety, where the free kick occurs from the five yard line. The team with the ball is given four downs to gain ten yards or score. Punting is illegal because of the size of the playing field, however, a field goal that either misses wide or falls short, may be returned. Thus an impossibly long field goal is tantamount to a punt in other football variants. A receiver jumping to catch a pass needs to get only one foot down in bounds for the catch to be ruled a completed catch, just as in college football. Practically. This means that one foot must touch the ground before the receiver is pushed into the boards by an opposing player. Passes that bounce off the rebound nets remain live. Balls that bounce off the padded walls that surround the field are live, the end zone walls were not live until the 2006 season. The scoring is the same as in the NFL with the addition of a drop kick field goal worth 4 points during normal play or 2 points as a post touchdown conversion. Blocked extra points and turnovers on 2 point conversion attempts may be returned by the defensive team for 2 points. New rules for 2007 season. Coaches are given 2 challenges per game, as in the NFL. To do so, they must throw the red flag before the next play. If the play stands as called after the play is reviewed they lose a timeout, however, if the play is reversed they keep their timeouts. If a team wins two straight challenges they are granted a third. All challenges are automatic in the final minute of each half and all overtime periods, as does scoring plays and turnovers. A game has four 15-minute quarters with a 12-minute halftime. Teams are allowed three timeouts per half, and two per overtime period if regulation ends tied. The clock stops for out-of-bounds plays, incomplete passes, or sacks only in the last minute of each half or overtime or because of penalties, injuries or timeouts. The clock also stops for any change in possession, until the ball is marked ready for play, for example, aside from in a half's final minute, time continues to run down after a touchdown, but stops after an extra point or two-point conversion attempt. If a quarter ends as a touchdown is scored, an untimed conversion attempt takes place. The play clock is 35 seconds starting at the end of the previous play. In all arenas, the final minute of the period is measured in tenths of a second. During the final minute of the fourth quarter, the clock stops if the offensive team has the lead and does not advance the ball past the line of scrimmage. 
This prevents the offensive team from merely kneeling down or running other plays that are designed solely to exhaust the remaining time rather than to advance the ball downfield, as often occurs in outdoor football. In the first overtime, each team gets one possession to score. Whoever is ahead after one possession wins. If the teams are tied after each has had a possession, true sudden death rules apply thereafter. Each overtime period is 15 minutes, and continues from the ending of the previous overtime period until the tie is broken. All overtimes thereafter are true sudden death, no games can be tied. Only exception applies to first game of the semi-final series, in which no overtime is played, and the game may end in a tie. Before the 2007 season, there was one 15-minute overtime period, and if it expired with the team still tied, the game was recorded as a tie. There were two ties in AFL history before the 2007 rule change. Formations Before 2007, the play clock was 25 seconds, and it began on the signal from the referee. Ball movement Some AFL players have gone on to have successful careers in the NFL, most notably Kurt Warner. Warner played college football at University of Northern Iowa and then quarterbacked the AFL's Iowa Barnstormers to Arena Bowl X in 1996 and Arena Bowl XI in 1997, before earning two NFL MVP awards, a Super Bowl MVP award and quarterbacking two different teams to the Super Bowl, winning Super Bowl XXXIV. Warner was later inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the only person to play a substantial portion of his professional career playing arena football. For two-way players dead time is one quarter, for specialists dead time is one half. Another, probably the second most notable behind Warner, could be Fred Jackson, although he never technically played arena football. Jackson played indoor football with the Sioux City Bandits in 2004 when they played in the NIFL and the UIF in 2005 before finally moving on to NFL Europa S. Rhein Fire in 2006, then to the NFL after Rhein. Following an initial undistinguished NFL career, being released or unsigned for four seasons out of eight, Quarterback Tommy Maddox would revitalize himself with the AFL's New Jersey Red Dogs for one season before going on to quarterback the Los Angeles Extreme to the XFL championship win and eventually return to the NFL for five seasons, retiring with a Super Bowl ring after the Pittsburgh Steelers won Super Bowl XL. July 14, 1988, Chicago Bruisers 37 Los Angeles Cobras 37, April 8, 2005, Nashville Cats 41, Dallas Desperados 41, July 25, 2015, Las Vegas Outlaws 0, New Orleans Voodoo 0. Other arena to NFL graduates include Anthony Armstrong, Orond Gadsden, Lincoln Coleman, Adrian McPherson, Rashid Davis, Jay Feely, David Patton, Rob Bironis, Antonio Chapman, Mike Vander Yacht, and Paul Justin. Former Arena League MVP Jay Gruden went on to coach the Orlando Predators of the AFL, and is currently the head coach for the Washington Redskins. Eddie Brown, voted in 2006 as the greatest player in AFL history, never played in the NFL, but his son Antonio Brown joined the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2010 and was voted to the Pro Bowl in 2011, 2013, 2014, and 2015. Scoring Coaching Challenges Timing Current Timing Rules 
Even though arena football is a relatively young sport, it has appeared in various forms of popular culture over the course of its existence. In the sitcom Reba, the character of Van Montgomery, played for the Arizona Rattlers and later the Colorado Crush, in Kinjite, Forbidden Subjects, a 1989 film directed by J. Lee Thompson, starring Charles Bronson, one scene takes place during an AFL game, with the Chicago Bruisers visiting the Los Angeles Cobras, in the 2005 film White Noise, a character flips through the channels on television, and pauses on an arena football game between the Orlando Predators and another team, Midway Sports. Released an arena football game in 2001 entitled Kurt Warner's Arena Football Unleashed. This game was poorly received, both by traditional video gamers who saw it as an unneeded ripoff of one of Midway's other American football game, NFL Blitz, and by arena football fans who did not like the rule changes and arcade nature of the game. EA Sports released a video game titled Simply Arena Football on February 9, 2006. It featured licensed players and arenas from the Arena Football League. A sequel, Arena Football, Road to Glory, was released in 2007, in the movie The Ringer. An early scene at the bar shows an Arena Football League game and the characters think about betting on the sport. In 2001, writer Jeff Foley published War on the Floor. An average guy plays in the Arena Football League and lives to write about it. The book details the journalist's two pre-seasons as an offensive specialist-slash-writer with the now-defunct Albany Firebirds. The 5 feet 6 inches Self-described unathletic writer played in three preseason games and recorded one reception for minus two yards, during the opening sequence of True Crime, New York City, two unnamed characters can be seen playing arena football, in the 2008 film Baby Mama, one of the characters tried to win AFL tickets through a radio call-in contest, in the 2007 film Freedom Writers, one of the characters is watching an AFL game on TV. In the first season of the television show Vegas, there was a scene about the Arena Bowl, where former Broncos QB John Elway and singer John Bon Jovi have a battle in the Montecito. In America's Game, the 2002 Buccaneers coach John Gruden mentions that his brother plays arena football for the Orlando Predators. In The Simpsons, Springfield has an arena football team called the Springfield Stun. It is first revealed when Bart and Milhouse are trying to plan their next adventure and Milhouse mentions arena football with the Springfield Stun. In the television show, The Office, there are multiple references to arena football. Based in Scranton, Michael Scott is seen wearing Wilkes Bar slash Scranton Pioneers sweatshirts and undershirts in various episodes. The Pioneers played in AF2 from 2002 to 2009. Also, a few of the Dunder Mifflin employees have a miniature version of the AFL's gold ball with blue strip on their desks. In 2014, AMC aired the reality television series Fourth and Loud, following the first season of the L.A. Kiss and its owners, including Kiss bandmates Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons, in 2016, The American Dad. Episode Roots dealt with the proposed construction of an arena for the new local arena football team, the Langley Falls Bazooka Sharks. It returned in the 2017 episode Bazooka Steve. Previous Timing Rule Changes Graduates to the NFL Other Media Notes